Welcome Journey Kids to another great Journey Kids online service. I cannot wait for today. I am so excited uh, about some brand new things that we are coming up because the summer is just starting. Since it's the last Sunday in May, we're gonna kick it off in a cool style. And uh, frankly, we're actually talking about something special. In fact, we're talking about what makes something special. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to play a game well, it involves cats and singing, so we'll see how it goes. Let's hop into it. I wonder how many of you have cats at home, how many of you even like cats, uh, but uh, cats are pretty interesting characters. And in fact, uh, uh, some friends of mine uh, have recorded some cats singing some of the best Disney songs around, and I wanna see if you can guess them as their cats sing. All right, so there's two parts to way to get points on this one. The first one is to name the song from the movie, so just the title, all right? The second one is to name the movie, so it'll tell you both of them, and uh, we'll uh, see how many points you can get uh, at the end. Uh, so let's hop into our first one. Uh, you should be able to chill out with this one nice and easily, so let's watch it. Oh, all right. Okay, that's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, know this one. Mm. Did you get it? Yeah, you're right. It was Let It Go Frozen. Let It Go Frozen. Congratulations if you got it. All right, our next one up is is a little interesting. Uh, uh, it might take you on a, a trip. All right, so let's go. So, oh, this cat can really sing. I mean, I mean seriously, like, ooh, oh, all right, all right, I think you know. Did you get it? Perfect, good job. A whole new world in the movie Aladdin. All right, so, so far you could have up to four points. Four points is your total right now. Uh, we got one more uh, to go, but before I get there, I wanna remind you that you can actually find at least two more of these online right now, today, on our YouTube channel. You can go right here uh, to a Journey Kids River Region. Be sure to subscribe to see them when they drop, but also uh, just uh, follow it and uh, see if you can get the next one uh, 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 coming up. But there should be at least two more, if not three, uh, uh, depending on how cooperative these cats are, which if you know, cats are not necessarily the most cooperative. So let's hop into our last one. All right, this one should take you far and wide. Uh, uh, it's one of my favorite ones uh, uh, to sing along with, if I'm being honest. Uh, so let's uh, kick it off, all right? Oh, mm. yeah, like this one, yeah, get it. All right, okay, yeah, yeah. All right, did you get it? Did you get it, How Far Will Go by Moana? I hope you got all six right, but if you didn't, that's okay. Uh, uh, maybe a parent could help you out with it a little bit. Uh, but let's uh, hop right back into our story uh, uh, to see what's going on. So, all right, see you later. All right, that was a little ridiculous, but I hope you had fun singing along with those cats and trying to figure out which songs they were singing. Uh, and and, and maybe, uh, maybe your parents helped you out with one or two. Uh, that's okay. Uh, but uh, as we hop into this, uh, I actually want to invite you uh, to uh, join me in worship. We have some brand new worship videos coming. Uh, and so let's stand to our feet and let's join in worship before we hop into our story. Thank you so much friends for worshiping along with us and thank you for the brand new videos from our friends. I cannot wait to show you more and more of those as we go throughout this time. Uh, we are hopping right into a brand new story. It is Jesus' early miracles. It's Jesus' beginning ministry and it's such a cool part because, well, miracles are just cool, man. Miracles are neat uh, uh, and, and it's really important to know that even though we may not know how they work or we might not know what happened behind the scenes. We know that it helped others. It helped the people around them. And, and it actually helped out something uh, for us to understand. Uh, if you remember, our big picture question leading up to this moment has been, why did Jesus come to earth? Why did Jesus come to earth? Well, the answer has been simple, to fulfill his father's plan. Fulfill his father's plan. Well, today is a brand new big picture question that we'll be tackling for the next few weeks. It is what makes people special? What makes people special? I want you to watch this video and think about if you can figure out the answer to that question through the video. So let's check it out. Jesus. 
Jesus traveled to Capernaum with his disciples Simon, Andrew, James, and John. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and began to teach. The people there were very surprised. Jesus' teaching was not like the scribes' teaching. He spoke with authority. Just then, a man with an unclean spirit shouted, What do you have to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus commanded the spirit to be quiet and come out of the man. The spirit yelled again and then came out. Everyone was amazed. Who is this Jesus, they asked. He teaches with authority and the unclean spirits obey him. News about Jesus spread quickly throughout all of Galilee. Next, Jesus and his disciples went to Simon and Andrew's house. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. Jesus went to her, took her hand, and healed her. She got up and began to serve them. That evening, large crowds of people came to the house with others who were sick or bothered by evil spirits, and Jesus healed them. Early the next morning, Jesus went out by himself to pray. Simon and the other disciples found him and said, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus said, Let's go on to the nearby villages so I can preach there too. This is why I have come. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee. He preached and drove out demons. A man with a skin disease came to Jesus. He got on his knees and begged, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was willing, and he healed the man. Jesus' miracles proved that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. They strengthened people's faith and met their needs. Through Jesus, God did what is impossible for us to do on our own. He provided forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. Man, what a cool set of stories. That is amazing that Jesus went around healing those that were sick in need. Now our big picture question, what makes people so special? Maybe it's something you've never thought about, especially as a kid, I can remember thinking of myself as pretty cool. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously I'm still cool now, uh, but uh, pretty cool. And, and uh, it, it wasn't until later that I realized that maybe I wasn't as good uh, at uh, some things as I thought I was, or maybe I, uh, maybe somebody else was better than me, especially the first time. You know, the first time you try anything, uh, you may be really good at it, or it may just be lucky, uh, or uh, you may need to work on it. In fact, most things in life you need to work on. You need to try and you need to decide to do better at. That's something that I think God has given us, a, a chance to improve, a chance to show up, but why are we special? Uh, until we kind of arrive, I mean, we can easily look at sports players, we can easily look at people on TV uh, and say, wow, they're really special, or they maybe they were special to that point, or maybe even YouTube, you're like, holy cow, how do they do that cool trick and all? Well, a lot of it is just practice, and a lot of it is just trying and trying and trying. But why did God make us special? Well, the answer is simple. We're special because we're made in His image. Male and female made to know Him. We're made to know God. God didn't just want to make us, He wanted to have a relationship with us. We see this all over the beginning that God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. We see this throughout life that God sent Jesus to save us. He sent Jesus to take care of things that we couldn't take care of. Now those people in our story were sick and they needed help. Well today, we may go to a doctor when we're sick. So we may need different help today than they did back then. Uh, and, and to kind of help illustrate this point, I actually kind of have something I want to show you. Uh, let me get it for us. Uh, it is, well, frankly, it's just some words. Uh, it's some words written up on a board uh, that, uh, that um, well, they're just different words. Sports, disobedience, TV, popcorn, miracles, selfishness, homework, sunburns, Lego, salvation. Uh, and and uh, they're just uh, different things. And we kind of want to, kind of want to showcase how we might handle some of these things uh, uh, by, by simply just erasing them, uh, by uh, 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 simply just handling it and, uh, and uh, kind of showing how that might work. Uh, but I think you'll see in just a second that some things are a little different and they need a different thing to fix them. All right, so, so hold on, let me get my eraser. So something simple. So, so, so we have a lot of different things on here. We could easily erase homework. 
uh, right? Amen, right? Summer started. How many of you are done with homework? Uh, and, uh, uh, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, we definitely could erase uh, Lego, right? Lego would definitely be an easy one to erase. Um, but uh, uh, maybe uh, some of these things like how, especially our story today, right? Miracles. Do you, do you think I can erase it? Like, let me try here. Uh, uh, it's, you know, it's not coming off. Um, I, you know, I might need something different. I might need something different to handle this because, uh, well, it's almost like it's written differently. Um, um, in fact, I, I actually have something. It's this tiny little pouch. Um, um, I, it actually is just made out of my first aid kit. Uh, and what it does really, really well is it, well, it cleans things. Like it actually cleans them all the way. Uh, and, and, and it repairs it if you're going to do something medical to it. Uh, so, so let me kind of show you what happens when I use it instead of my uh, eraser. Whoa, check that out. Okay, that's pretty neat, Frito. That's cool, man. That's cool that it could erase it. In fact, we probably could do the rest of it there in a second. But, but I hope that you see that some of these words, some of these words could be erased pretty easily, you know, uh, but some of them just not the same. You know, as we talk about these things, that little wipe handled it and not the eraser. You may not have uh, all the tools that you need to fix all your problems. In fact, especially when we look around some of this here, it's like salvation. We can't save ourselves and disobedience. Will, we sometimes need help uh, uh, to accomplish those things and then especially to get rid of selfishness. Those things take effort. They take time. We have to ask for help. We have to ask for help from the one that can actually rescue us, Jesus. Jesus is the one that could actually rescue us. Uh, and, and I hope that you see that too. But um, as, we, as we discuss this as a bigger picture, uh, what makes us so special is that Jesus is God, and yet he came to earth. He humbled himself and became a slave for you and for me. And, 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 and we don't just mean that in the political sense. He became lower than low so that he may serve us. Now, we're not his master. He became like a slave, doing what was needed for us when we needed it. We have to ask for help, but we don't want to. We want to do things ourselves. In fact, some of that is the selfishness, right, that we, that we can't erase. We want to get ourselves saved. We want to accomplish those things ourselves, and, and really, it's impossible. But one of the most interesting ideas of this story is the discussion of miracles. And I don't know what you thought, but I thought they were pretty cool. And I kind of had a question about it, and, I, and our friend Pastor Brian addresses that question that I think uh, uh, might uh, be on your mind as well. So let's watch it. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. James from Clinton, Mississippi asks, I know God can perform miracles, but why didn't he give us the ability to perform miracles? James, that's a good question. And you know, we see in the Bible miracles occur, you know, in many different places. We, we see in the Old Testament that God performed miracles himself and he had other people like Moses perform miracles. And then we get to the New Testament and we see that Jesus, of course, performed miracles. And then the early apostles also performed miracles in the book of Acts. So the question is natural, then, you know, why can't I perform miracles? Why not me when they did in the Bible? Well, here's the big idea. Remember the purpose of miracles are to reveal who God is. It's to reveal God's plan, that God is real. Jesus performed miracles to reveal that He is the Son of God. And so miracles always had that deeper purpose to point us to the truth of Scripture. So the apostles were performing miracles before the Bible was finished. So think about it, if, if you were Peter, for example, and you're going and telling people that Jesus is the Son of God, that He's the Messiah, they might say, well, who are you? Why should we trust you? Why should we believe you? But if you had just performed a miracle like Peter did, people might say, oh, wait a minute, I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna pay attention. So that's why we see miracles occurring in the scriptures. But why not today? Because we don't need them. We have all we need right here in the Bible that this is the power. This is really what should draw people to the truth of who God is and what he's done. So we don't need to perform miracles. Now, that's not to say that God cannot still perform miracles today. We believe that God is a miracle working God. He can still heal. He can do amazing things. It's in his very nature. And he probably does all around us that we just don't see. 
So we can't be confused to think that just because we don't see people perform miracles, that God still does not perform miracles. He can and likely does. So here's a question back for you. What evidence can you recognize as proof that God is at work in the world today? I hope that answered your question that I had. I've always wondered that as well and been curious about it because our world is full of so many needs. Our world is full of so many things that, that, that frankly, Jesus could fix with a snap of his fingers or Jesus could show up and, 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 and help everyone. Well, the thing is, he has. He sent us. In fact, when Jesus left, he said this amazing thing, that through the Holy Spirit, you will do greater works than I have done here on earth. Think about that. The church, the apostles, the disciples that we learned about being gathered together last week were told by Jesus that as he leaves and goes into heaven, they will do greater works than he did here on earth. Now, that doesn't necessarily always mean that when we touch somebody, they'll be healed. But it does mean that we know the one. We know who can heal them from their selfishness. Who can heal them from their disobedience. Who can perform amazing works. In fact, many times when we hear about somebody's story changing, they might even call it a miracle because you see, it's something that is not easy. It's also something that's not that they did. It's something that only God can do. God is working. God is working through you and me and he's working through this time. I hope to see you guys very, very soon and I cannot wait to hear how God has worked in your family. Until then, have a great day. Thank you.